right. I'll try to talk a bit loud. I, I'm not going to adjust the audio settings. I did a previous video and then it uh, did that chipmunks uh, thing again. So I was like, oh, bloody hell. So I think it's using the, um, the microphone from the webcam above you. Or, I'm uh, sorry, well, from what you're seeing. So what have I done here so far? Um, well, I changed the, um, the entrenchments. The entrenchment turns here for the entire Russians. And I also did this for um, uh, the Germans over here and all along here. Hold on, I just gotta turn it down a bit. Holy smokes, is it ever loud. Hold on. I should have brought the mouse, uh, you know. All right, that's a bit wee bit better. I just um, changed the pace of the music because I was like, holy smokes, you're just blowing my brains out here. Um, so yeah, so I changed the, uh, the entrenchment turns for the entire Germans all along here. Um, I still have to do the Russians uh, this bit here, but what I'm going to probably end up doing is just uh, finish off the Austrians. Not for now. I've got about less than an hour before uh, I really have to like completely properly engage for work. Speaking of which, I'm, uh, we'll talk about it later, but um, you know, it's interesting that I am going to be using, like, well, why not? I mean, that's the way it is. This is what friendships are like, even if they are, you know, never actually met these people in real life or whatever, I've, you know, obviously interacted with them. Good Lord, whatever. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be heading for a strike and I'm probably going to have some bouts of anxiety and whatnot and so on and so forth. So I have to remind myself to stop it's so bloody difficult man to stop thinking about the future and just like focus on the present um you know and have to remind myself all these little mental tricks you know that the future is just a figment of my imagination it's there's no scientific evidence that it exists and all that type of stuff you know we just don't exist in the anyways i'm gonna get into there um so yeah you know there's and there's always an escape clause if i you know go into financial ruin because of uh the strike or whatever I mean supposedly uh, my nephew wants to uh, buy the house so that'll be cool okay oh yes that's right I also got to remember to sip my coffee coffee number four jeepers jumping um, so the only reinforcements for the Germans this turn are four cavalry divisions I think I'm gonna be popping them all towards here which makes a lot of sense it's nice and open here this is getting rather constricted maybe you leave one down there um, the irony is, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Manfred von Richthofen, his uncle, remember, he's, uh, oh, uh, where, oh, you're over here now. Um, he's uh, in charge of the Corps HQ for the Kriegfrosch, and uh, I brought him as a special uh, thing of the jig over here. He was uh, in charge historically, I think, of the 1st Cavalry Corps or whatever. But anyways, he historically is supposed to be arriving now with those four cavalry divisions. It, but uh, I brought him ahead of time because uh, he's like, you know, the, a special covert, whatever. Um, on the other note, I'm super happy. Thank you, William Ahrens, for mentioning the Ard Wolf's Lair uh, counterclipping show about uh, World War I games. <clears throat> Excuse me. That would be nice to listen to. I haven't been on there in ages. It's just, uh, just too much. To I just don't have enough time for all everything. Um, so it would be nice to listen to, which is the way I, I found out about that uh, show anyway. So that would be cool. So thanks a lot. As well as when I was starting to read up on, remember, I'm taking a course in, on the World War One in Africa kind of thing. That's the way I got to look at it. Um, it, it was mentioned in the foreword that uh, one thing that's amazing, you know, people seem to forget. You know, of course, we're so Eurocentric, well, at least I am Eurocentric or whatever. I'm sure other people aren't. But... Um, uh, the fighting in Africa, for the most part, even though it was, it was varied all over the place, so you can't just say, you know, uh, this front or whatever. But um, it was very mobile, very open, very much maybe like this, certainly not like, uh, uh, you know, the, what people are, uh, at least the, what I originally uh, felt about with World War One games, which is just, you know, move a hex, trench, trench, trench stuff or whatever. And that's all. And then after three or four hours, it was like, so who won kind of thing. I, I'm just, I'm being flippant, but you get the idea. Um, and it's interesting. So I, I'm just like, wow, maybe that show will show, uh, or I'll listen to it, and maybe there'll be some more uh, World War One games based in Africa, because it just makes so much sense from a gamer's perspective, if you want to get into this open, you know, tr uh, trying out different stuff and whatnot. That'd be kind of cool. 
Oh my gosh, this is a bit of a rambly bambly. I should have made notes because there's probably some other stuff I wanted to talk about, but uh, oh well. And of course I can't go and listen to my uh, <laughs> previous video unless I understand chipmunk. Maybe I'll ask Miss Chips to uh, translate for me for crying out loud. Uh, was there any other uh, thing I'm trying to think of? Oh my gosh, this week, man, for the live stream, I have got to look up the Uzak Pass and do like a deep dive of this thing. This is driving me up the tree. It keeps coming up over and over again. Uzak Pass, this, that, and the other thing uh, this week in uh, in the chronology. So I was like, okay, this this has got to go. I, like, let's just hammer this puppy home. Uh, and then not this week, but next week is the second Battle of Ypres starts and I think today oh my gosh I'm not sure is it April 11th I gosh I feel uh, I should know this as a freaking supposedly you're into World War One and a Canadian and all that crap is uh, Vimy Ridge I'm gonna have to look up um, the date it's the 9th or the 11th I thought it was the 11th I'll have to go and look at uh, look that up um, oh shit excuse me something like that I oh, what? Maybe it is the ninth, because I can remember me was last year. I think uh, it was for um, I was trying to arrange uh, when we were uh, Rob and I were going to do our game day. That I was like, hey, why don't we do Vimy Ridge? Because I got uh, two ver I got two two Vimy Ridge games. Uh, I got the De uh, Decision Games Folio one, and then I have one by a Canadian. Uh, he's a pretty famous game designer. Uh, darn it, uh, out on the West Coast. Uh, shoot. I could just see some of his letters in my mind of his name. Oh, it's driving me up the flipping tree. Of course I could go and hit pause, but I'm not gonna do that. I gotta get going. Uh, so that's it. I'm starting to plan out what's gonna happen. I'm uh, the massive November attack. I uh, just gotta be careful with the rail because the beginning, I think it's turn three. I have to check, but I'm pretty darn sure it's 03 November is when some of the Vestung and uh, um, Hotzendorf divisions are able to uh, go towards the front, but then I have to start getting all those minor little, like I said, those little wheels of the churning of the replacement units, and you get you, you bring spent troops back and all in one turn. It's just this constant flow of seeing the troops. Oh, it's just so lovely. Oh yeah, and then uh, uh, I will finish on a final thing. I almost completed uh, my um, Prussian uh, logistical core um, emblem. I've stylized it a little bit, and of, of course, it's um, it's surrounded by a hexagon for goodness sakes. But uh, it's starting to look pretty darn good, so I can't wait to have that actually properly done. I can scan it in, then I can start making some plastic transfers, as well as I can start cross stitching the little bugger. That'd be sweet. All right, that's it. Hope you guys have a fantastic Tuesday. See ya. Oh, I have to go and pause. So. Hold on here. Uh, oh shoot, I left the mouse over there. Ha! Ah, ah. I could have done that ages ago then.